All right, welcome to The Breakdown. We have a, a special guest with us today. Um, he is the man of illustrations. The man of illustrations. The man of illustrations. We got Brian LaRue with us today. Uh, he's our youth minister here and young adult minister. Um, and you fill in whatever you need. So uh, welcome. Whatever they need, I'll try my best to uh, fill a hole. Yeah. Uh, doesn't mean I'll fill it well, but I'll I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? So well, you d- you didn't you didn't let us down with your illustration this Sunday. Um, loved it, loved you riding in on a bike, but we'll get to we'll get to that later. Um, we're glad to have you. Uh, this uh, was kind of a one-off series. Um, kind of just Nick let us let you choose whatever you wanted to preach on, and so uh, you preached on long obedience in the same direction. Uh, I thought it was fascinating and a great. A presentation of, of really the gospel and how we as disciples need to cling to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but before we get too much into that, I have a question for you about long obedience. Sure. So your oldest just had a birthday, right? She yes. just turned 18. 18. 18, yeah. If you could give us men and or parents advice for child rearing or just being a dad or a parent because that takes long obedience right yeah it's in the same direction we're trying to trying to give um help our kids reach christ what you got for us man that is a hard (laughs) question because parenting is crazy hard you know i feel like you're never done like spiritually you're never done you're never finished becoming a disciple and i feel like as a parent I'm never done. Mm. Like you, you read all these things when they're little and you're figuring out, okay, this is how we rear as a, a young child. And then you're scrambling. Cause now it's, uh, I like sports analogies, but now the game has changed Yeah, and they're in elementary school and how do we navigate that? So I, you know, then it comes to now they're in high school and I'm, I'm looking again, I'm reading, I'm, I'm, I'm asking questions like you just asked me. I think it's one of those things where, you just have to continue to learn as a parent. Yeah. You look at your mistakes. Um, you you continue to encourage through whatever is going on. But I, I don't think anybody ever arrives. Like, I don't think I'm writing a parenting book. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> at least not yet. Maybe, yeah. maybe uh, I'm not writing any books, but it's going to be years. I just don't feel like, I feel like I'm still, I'm not the one to give the greatest advice except to continue to, grow as a parent yeah. don't ever think you've you've arrived because uh, i think you're in trouble hmm. if you do that's that's really good and uh, i mean i can <clears throat> I definitely understand that as far as growing even and with our girls being so young from the ages of one to two there's such a big jump there that sure you have to start doing things and thinking differently um so yeah that's that's good yep um so let's get back into um the sermon Give us an overview. What was your sermon about? Uh, really, with just coming through some things that I was walking through. You know, you said Nick kind of gave me that one, and it's really hard. I feel like to. Oh yeah. Okay, here's <laughs> anything you want, man. Just green light. You can preach on, and I always think that's hard to to nail down what that is. And I really just went through a couple of things that I'm walking through, um, in our student ministry mm-hmm. and in my own personal, like just some Bible study I'm walking through. And kind of went off that. I think it's easier when we go to what we're getting fed with. Absolutely. And it was this idea of this long obedience kind of jumped into my head and has been, you know, like uh, been writing that in my journal a little bit, trying to figure out, okay, kind of like the parenting thing. Okay, now what? How do I figure this out? What do I, what? How I want? I don't want to be one of the kings that goes awry and mm-hmm. is a bad leader. I don't want to be uh, an absent father or husband or. I don't want to be, not be a disciple of Jesus. And it just came out of that. Like I want to on my, the day I die to say, you know what? Look back at my life and say, man, I, that, that was, I, I strived to be more and more like Jesus and become a better husband, friend, father, whatever you fill in the blanks. Like that's what I wanted to be. And it just kind of where it came from, you know? Yeah, I like it. There's two points that you made that I think really stuck out to me. And that's, <clears throat> We're obedient to something, right? Yeah. Whether whether we like to, to admit it or not, we're being obedient to either God or to our flesh. And you said small inv- investments can either reap great rewards or can reap great disaster. Sure. 
I don't know about you, but I always like starting with the bad because I like ending with the good. So let's start with um, uh, small investments can reap great disaster. Whenever you were preaching this, I couldn't help but think of Romans chapter one. And Paul, Paul lays it out for us in those first couple of chapters of Romans of, hey, without God, you're nothing. Sure. Like there's nothing that you can do to save yourself. And uh, I'm reading uh, an apologetics book. Um, and he really, uh, it's by Vodi Bakum or Vodi Bakum. Cool. I never say his name right. Right. Sorry, if he ever listens to this, I apologize. Right. Our bad. Uh, we yeah. apologize. It's, it's my ignorance. <laughs> yes. So uh, in this book, he talks about this idea of the spiral of man. And it really comes from uh, Romans 1 um, verses 19 through 28. And he, he separates this. And I kind of just want to go through it because I believe that we as Christians need to know if our lives are spiraling away from God. That is one of um, the disciplines that we should have to be able to look at where we're at and say, hey, are we going towards God or away from God? And I think this kind of just lays out the foundation of, for us to say, where am I spiritually? So the first thing he talks about is that all men know God. Uh, Romans 1, 19 through 20 says, um, since that may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. And so we know God by general revelation, yep. by his creation. Um, we can know who he is. We also know him through scripture. He's been made known through Jesus, and we have the account of that. So all men are held accountable for this truth. And so we can either accept him or deny him. So what happens if we really deny this truth? Um, Vade says, men do not honor the God whom they know. And how do they do this? Well, they do it with idols, which is his next thing. We exchange the glory for God um, with idols. Romans 1, 23 says, and exchange the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Now you got into this in your sermon. You talked about the high places that these kings... Um, didn't want to get rid of. Yeah. And you're just kind of giving me an example of one that you you studied even after you prepared for your sermon. Let's let's talk a little bit about that. Sure. So what are these high places? Uh, these high places, uh, they are, what we know about them is that they're, they're higher, like probably on a mountain or a hilltop, usually outside of the city. And these are places where they would go and they'd worship other gods. Like that's where they'd put their idols out there. That's, that's just where they'd go. And it says like, if you read through First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles, you see every king. It tells you like his biographical thing. Okay, this is his name. Yeah. He reigned for this long. Sometimes we'll say his mother was this person, his father was this person, and then it will say like he did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Mm. He did good, but he left the high places. Like it was this one thing. Like over and over again, Scripture points to like their heart was not fully in it. Like yeah. they left some small things that led to destruction of nation and their lives and mm. the lives of other people, you know, getting drug off into slavery. I mean, just all kinds of things it, it left because they left these one small areas, like, like our hearts. If we don't get the one small thing out, like, yeah. like we've talked about here already, like it's a small thing that can lead to really big disaster. Yeah. And, and when we exchange <clears throat> God for these man-made idols for whatever it is, uh, Romans 1 25 says this, it says they exchanged the truth of God for a lie mm -hmm. and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. And so men indulge in their lust and whatever they want and the lust of the flesh. Yep. And so we as believers, whenever we see ourselves exchanging the truth of God for our truth, mm -hmm. for what we want, then that should be a red flag for us. And then um, the next one that uh, he talks about in his book is that men shatter the image they bear. And I, I really, really like this one. It comes from Romans 1, 26 and 27. Because of this, God gave them over to their shameful lusts. So because whatever they were chasing, God just allowed them to chase it. Um, they exchanged their natural relations for unnatural ones in the same way. Men also abandon natural relations with women and inflame their lusts for one another. Men... Uh, committed indecent acts with men and received in themselves a due penalty for their perversion. And so mm -hmm. I love this one because the image of God that we bear is so important. 
I mean, at the beginning of Scripture, what does it say? Genesis one twenty seven. It says we were created in the image of God, yeah. and so we are are bearers of this image. So at some point, whenever we make these decisions over time, when we're long obedience to the flesh, when we're we're chasing after that, we eventually forget what we were created for. Sure. To me, that's that's terrifying. Like ima- imagine your computer just forgetting what it's what it's what it was created for that'd be that'd be nonsensical like it'd be silly to even think about that but we as created beings we forget what we were created for and then the last one romans uh, 128 it says men lose their mind they can't retain the knowledge of god they forget what their purpose is to even be on this earth which is to um, point people towards god so the second thing you talked about the good one is that we can we can reap great rewards with being obedient obedient in the things that matter. Yep. And so, what does this look like? Um, we talked about two words, two fancy words, and we'll explain them: justification and sanctification. Sure. Um, let's talk about justification. And you talked about this instant thing of becoming a Christian. So, elaborate a little bit on that. Sure. You know, there's a, a lot of gradual things and there's a lot of, uh, well, there's one big instant thing. And we kind of t- I kind of hit on that. Like when we make Jesus our Lord and Savior, like mm. it's a big, big deal. Like yeah. I'm now downplaying it. It's the biggest thing that's ever going to happen in your life is, is becoming a follower of Jesus Christ, making him your Lord and your Savior. You know, you go from death to life. You go from darkness to light. I mean, mm. just you, you all sin washed away. I mean, the, the promise of heaven, like just... Huge thing, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Like a lot of stuff is going on when we make those decisions to follow Jesus. Um, and it's a huge, big, like snap of the finger. Like it just, it's instant and it's it's not gradual at all. It's this huge thing that God does in our lives. Um, so that's that's the big one, yeah. is, is that one. That's the justification of what Jesus did on the cross. Like it's a big deal. Mm. That's why we take communion every week. It's Absolutely. a big deal. That's why you see crosses... Uh, all over the place. That's why people have them tattooed on their arm. Like it's a big deal. That's why the cross is, is yeah. so huge. It's a it's it's a pretty serious thing that, that God would come send his son uh, to die for you and for me. Absolutely. And it's it's a point in time that we can see. Like we can say, hey, this is when I was saved. Like it's a it's a fixed point of us understanding the decision that we make. Yeah. I mean, just in Romans one, we were stuck there. But Romans one sixteen, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Like Paul realized that something happened whenever he accepted Jesus, and it's not just a point in time. It's this continuation of discipleship, which was the next thing that you talked about was sanctification. Yeah. And and you said this is a g- more gradual thing. This isn't an instant thing where you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you're like, well. I'm perfect. I'm made perfect. I am never going to sin again. Like there's this process that happens within us to lead us away from darkness into the light. Right. Um, you have anything to, to kind of add to that, to sanctification? Uh, no, it's just, it's, it's very gradual and it's, uh, it's something we want and um, it's something we should chase after. Yeah. Is that just walking with Jesus daily? You know, that direction towards him is something we, we've got to, uh, we should want to, you know, to, to grow in, in Christ. If we don't grow, we're, you know, usually if, if, if something's not growing, you know, you're figuring out, like, what's going on here? Are we going to keep this around, if, yeah. even if it's not growing? Like, uh, if, if a plant's not growing, the farmer's going to be like, well, i am plant something different, or I'm going to try something different. Like, this is not, mm-hmm. I'm not going to keep it around. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm glad you pointed that out. It's direction because we can be being made into something, but we have to be in the direction of Christ. Yeah. We have to look like Christ more and more. Um, and one of the things you talked about was direction doesn't mean perfection. We're not going to get it right on the first time. Just like you were saying, if a plant's not growing, we have to figure out why it's not growing and or plant something different. Sure. And so this this direction, this um, this trying to get it right... Whenever we mess up, okay, and I think this is really important, and you made a point of it, you used David as an example when he messed up. There was something that he did. Sure. Let's talk about that because this is important. We, we, can, we can really just settle in our mess-ups and keep making that same mistake over and over again, or we can repent. Sure. So let's talk about repentance for a little bit. Sure. Uh, repentance is something I think many times when we first hear about it, we think it's a one-time deal. Like, mm-hmm. 
Uh, many times we'll think, oh, it's Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized. Like, okay, yeah. if that's the one time I do it, is it the, <laughs> the big initial thing we've talked about already? Like the big, the big, the, I don't know, the big bang? But the big I, bang. I don't know what it, <laughs> that's uh, what we're calling it today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but when we make Christ our Savior, we, that's something we do before that. We repent. We turn away from our sin. Repent is just this word that really means to turn, turn away from. Um, I always uh, heard it was like a military term. Mm. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with about haste. Yeah. That means like if you're marching this way and the drill sergeant says about haste, you would pivot, turn back, and go the opposite way of 180 um, is what you would do. And, and that's what many times we've got to turn away from the high places in our life, those idols, uh, from sin, all those things. We get, like mm. If we realize we're going in the wrong way, we've got to get back facing uh, towards Christ. Absolutely. I I had this, I actually listened to um, a little John Piper sermon this morning. Sweet. And he, he talked from Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, and he said this, We must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. Yeah. I think that is the answer to long obedience. Sure. Is this reminding of what we heard. Uh, that's why I love that our church takes communion every week. It's this moment in time where I know that I get to remember what Jesus did for me. Sure. Now that should absolutely happen every day. We should be preaching the gospel to ourselves on a daily basis. But if we have this reminder of what has, has already happened, what has helped us to get here, I think we are more likely to examine our lives to make sure that we're not headed in the wrong direction. Um, we're more aware of the pitfalls that that are that are in our lives that will lead us towards destruction. Sure. Because drifting away, it doesn't just. It's not like, hey, I'm here in this space, and now I'm 100 miles away. I, I think of like sure. in the ocean whenever um, somebody like falls off a ship or something like that. They don't just instantly show up on shore or instantly or a hundred miles away from their ship. No, it's a slow process. Yeah. And I think oftentimes because it's slow, we're not, we don't realize it. It's like, Oh, I'm just, I'm a little less patient today. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I've had a bad day. Yeah. I didn't eat. I'm, I'm hangry. Right. And so we make all these excuses and then, you know, two years from now, we're the most impatient person we know. And so realizing that it's a slow process for both ways, I think will help us kind of keep our eyes on the goal. Yeah, I agree. I've always kind of heard it put like, uh, I'm sure you've been to the beach and you know you're out swimming for a while and you, you know that's where your beach towel is. Like you mm. know that's, you're there, you're in front of that hotel or whatever that building is, like you know, and then like you're playing around, jumping around, doing whatever you do and then the ocean, you look up and you're like, <laughs> Well, that, that thing's way over here now. Yeah. It's you didn't. It was a slow thing as you played. You buy, like the ocean moves you this way or that way. You you move down the beach, and I think spiritually we do the same. Like we uh, we 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 move one way or the other, right? Mm -hmm. So I like it. So, what would be your encouragement to somebody who <clears throat> has maybe slipped a little bit, who, who has maybe chased the things of their their flesh? But they, they, they've repented and they want to stay the course. What's some practical advice that we could give them today? Well, if we've repented, we've, we're going the other way. We've got to have some things that are going to help us in our, that path. Mm -hmm. I, I talk a lot to students and actually just talking to young adults a lot about the spiritual disciplines. And yeah. I really think those are things that get us on the right path towards going after Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing, just practicing the practices Jesus just did. You know, the, yeah. the practices of Jesus, I think, are huge and they're important and they get us on the path uh, towards towards Jesus. And they're not hard. Some of them are really difficult, like uh, fasting. That's that's a difficult one. That's 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 an upper level. Like that's that's a hard. It's yeah, a hard for us. We're not even familiar with that. Right. I mean, in the ancient Eastern culture, they're like, yeah, we know what that is. Right. We have no idea. I mean. I say no to something? What? Yeah. Like, no, I get what I want, right? Yes, Whenever yes, I want. Man. Yeah. Like, just uh, practicing Sabbath, hard. I mean, crazy hard in our world to, to, to rest. Mm. Um, we want to go. If we, people who aren't going, what do we say? Well, they're lazy, mm. you know, but that, it's just not, you know, we would, I don't think we've ever called Jesus lazy. If you look at some of the yeah. days of his life, like from start to finish, from 
like the beginning of the day to the end of the day. Like he was always about it, but he would always Sabbath. Absolutely. So, One of the things I like that you did, just to add on to that um, with our young adults, is you put accountability in there. And I think for any Christian, that's, man, that's a, such an important tool to have, to have somebody in your life that's going to say, hey, hey, Brian, like, are you on the right track? It's huge. And, and we can do this. Um, I feel like as you grow with other people, as you get to know them, we can point things out. We know when each other's slipping. But we got to be honest with each other. Uh, one of the things you told us Thursday was you can lie to each other. You can say, man, I'm doing great with prayer. Sure. What are you benefiting from that? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Getting out of a hot seat maybe, but yeah. I mean, still, what are you... You've gained nothing. Yeah, to only get in a hotter seat later for eternity. I'm True. <laughs> I was a little dark there. That was. But I, I feel like setting yourself up for success with the spiritual disciplines, with accountability, is, is key for the Christian nowadays. Being in the Word, being in prayer, all these things are so important for us. Yeah. And Don't think, grow alone, right? I mean, there's yeah. other people who, I mean, who doesn't need someone else to walk with them? you know, spiritually even, like to, to get stronger spiritually. Like I need someone else to say, hey, Brian, pick up the pace. Hey, Brian, let's, let's do this together. Like I think that's, and that's the cool thing about the church is we have those kind of things, uh, whether it's a, a spouse, whether it's one of your friends, whether it's uh, whoever it may be, a mentor, like yeah. there's probably somebody who would love to, hey, would you read this with me? Mm. Would you, uh, can we follow up? Would you check in on me? Like I I just think there's probably someone in our life who would love, who would jump at the chance. And not only help them, it'll help you. Yeah. Both, both, you know. It's like God knew what we needed yeah. and created us for relationship. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, we always love to end the podcast with uh, something we're looking forward to, man. What you, what do you have going on, whether it's personal, ministry related, whatever, man? What am I looking forward to? That's always a hard question for me. I'm, uh, I am uh, I'm looking forward to... Uh, we're doing a hard series coming up in uh, in our student ministry. We're talking about God's plan for sexuality. Mm. And that just hits a lot of things yeah. um, in our lives personally uh, and, and culturally. Um, but the God has a plan for that. And I'm excited to preach about it, but it's also a, a challenge. Yeah, I've been praying about that one a lot because um, it's, a, it's a heavier one. Mm. Um, not always, you know, sometimes we talk about friendship, you know, in youth ministry, and that's uh, it's heavy, but it, it's important, but it's not as heavy as God's plan for for our uh, our sexual and our sexuality. You yeah. know, like those those things are, are heavy. So I'm, I'm excited yeah. to preach it, mm-hmm. um, but I'm also very uh, prayerful and ask for prayer from several other people just to, hey, would you pray for me as I walk through what God wants me to walk through here and teach what He wants me to teach? Absolutely, absolutely. We have a we're gonna have a three year old in our house. Really? It's Friday. I'm excited to celebrate a birthday. I like birthdays. Birthdays are fun. And I feel like Alan's getting to the age where she kind of understands what that means. Sure. Not really, but yeah. uh, she enjoys Chick Fil A. So we're gonna celebrate <laughs> some Chick Fil A and do whatever Adeline wants to do. And we're also um, moving in a, to a house soon, and That's so awesome. it's cool to sit down roots here. Mm-hmm. To say, hey, I'm going to be here for a long time. Sure. I want to build relationships with the people in my community. I'm excited for that, man. That's a, that is exciting, and we're excited for you, man. Yeah. So Not that's... excited to move everything, but excited to uh, to get into that house. So, gotcha. Um, hey, we appreciate you being on podcast this week. I always love having you. Uh, we're thankful for all the people that listen. And uh, if you ever have any questions, let us know, and we'll see you next week. Yep. Thanks so much.